with Mia and Ziad. Today we're going to be talking about mutual funds and ETFs. We're going to be going through the similarities, the differences, and when you should be investing in them. So if you're liking this content that we've been putting out, you know, make sure that you are liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel and that you're also following us on our other social media platforms. We have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have LinkedIn, and we even have TikTok. So give all of our social media accounts a follow. Yeah, if you aren't following us already, you're missing out. Honestly, we've been pumping out so much content for our clients and our community um, because we really want to make sure that we're connecting with you guys, you know, whether it be podcasts, webinars, our how to series, um, anything along the lines of that, you know, we want to be available to you. And so you do yourself a favor, give us a follow, give us a like uh, as we continue to do this. I'm really excited for this episode specifically. Um, you know, this is diving into more of the investing side of financial planning, right? And what um, what to be investing in. And, and one of the most integral parts of anyone's investment portfolio is mutual funds and ETFs. Uh, you know, they serve uh, as a great foundation for anyone's investments. And we just wanted to take the time today to talk over all the basics around it. So, um, you know, what are mutual funds and ETFs? Why do we use them? How do they play a part in your investments? And what, and what funds are best for your situation? What are the right funds for you? Um, so I'm excited to get into this. Yes, absolutely. And as always, everything that we'll be saying is really just general information. None should be taken as personal advice. If you have questions about your specific scenario, please ask your financial advisor. Yeah. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. I mean, first and foremost, a lot of people, when we talk about mutual funds and ETFs, ask, well, what are they? And so what mutual funds and ETFs are, we can use just the general blanket term funds, right? Is they are diversified funds with a common objective. When you buy these funds, you are pooling your money with hundreds, if not thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people um, to buy a basket of companies all at once. And so rather than just buying an individual stock, which lets you own an individual company, when you buy these funds, you are buying hundreds of different investments. Um, and so that's great because it allows you to become properly diversified, which we'll get into a little bit down the line. But the big thing to note here is you're not just buying one investment, you're buying hundreds at the same time. Definitely. And then a little bit, you know, why are they a good investment? Well, they're, they're lower risk because the cost of the hold the basket of stock is much cheaper than buying all the individual securities. But it gives you that same diversification as if you had bought in all of them. And mutual funds particularly can hold stocks, they can hold bonds, and they can hold other securities. Mutual funds also give the investor access to actively and professionally managed portfolios for a low price. They suit many types of investment goals. There's growth funds that focus on companies with great growth potential. There's income funds that will offer periodic payments and there's balanced funds that are a mix of stocks and bonds and plenty more. So, I mean, there's money market funds, there's index funds. We could go on and on. We could have a whole episode <laughs> about it, really. Oh, definitely. But we'll get into that some other time. Um, so to choose what fund is right for you, you know, you really need to talk to your financial advisor and have them help you evaluate your risk tolerance and oh, your overall investment objectives. ETFs, on the other hand, you know, as mentioned before, it's diversification. It tracks a broad range of stocks. And, you know, we're going, for example, we're going to need to rely more on solar energy. So I'm not sure what company is going to do the best, what's going to dominate. You know, there's a solar ETF. It's TAN with all the current top players. And ETFs trade like stock. Their prices fluctuate throughout the day. They can be purchased on margin or sold short. You can look at their daily price change, unlike a mutual fund, which is priced at the end of the day. And ETFs are passively managed. So they're going to have lower expense ratios compared to a mutual fund. And expense ratios are kind of like pay-as-you-go fees. So if you have a 2% annual expense ratio and you only hold your money in the fund for half a year, you only pay 1%. Um, dividends will also be immediately reinvested. Yeah, 
Um, and to, to go deeper into that dividends being reinvested, that's a huge thing when it comes to funds. You know, a lot of the times when you invest in a company, they're going to give you back dividends, which is a portion of the profits that they earn. They're going to reward you for owning their investment, their company. Um, and so, norm, so rather than just getting a, a check at the door, you'll be automatically using those dividends to buy more into that fund. And so that's going to allow your money to grow even quicker, which is great. Um, and also, you know, just to summarize a little bit, the difference between mutual funds and ETFs, the big thing to know is they're so similar in terms of the diversified, but mutual funds are going to have that active money manager making decisions in the account throughout the year, well, um, which is why they're going to cost a little more. But when it comes to, you know, years like this year, where there is a lot of fluctuation and a lot of volatility, that's where they earn their keep. And so ETFs, on the other hand, are passively managed. They're set up to track a certain area or sector of investment. Um, and so, and, and because they're passively managed, because there's no money manager, then they cost a little bit less, right? And people use them to, to generally focus on certain sectors that they like, just like Mia mentioned, solar energy is a great example. Um, and so when should you be investing in one or the other? It really depends. Right. Uh, it depends on your situation. It depends on your goals. Generally, we like to say it's best to invest in both. You know, you use funds to have that active money management um, for a general goal, right? Whether it be growth, whether it be income, anything along the lines of that. And then you use ETFs to best sector allocate, basically choose certain areas that you like and get a little bit more into them while not necessarily buying individual positions, which can get pretty expensive. And so um, what and then on top of that, a lot of people ask, well, what is the right fund for me? Again, this is just about your goals, right? Um, if you have a goal, uh, if you're looking for aggressive growth, there's a fund for that. If you're looking for investing in clean energy, there's a fund for that, right? And this is something that we're here to help with as your advisors. Uh, you know, we want to sit down with you, make sure that your investments are making sense with your goals. And we're creating a plan that allows you to get, that allows you to get there as best as possible. And so, um, so that's really important to keep in mind when it comes to investing in mutual funds or ETFs or both. Definitely. And I think that all that you just said kind of prompts the question of, you know, what type of investor invests in ETFs and mutual funds? And they can be ideal for beginner investors with the low expense ratios, the liquidity, the range of investments and the provided diversification. Um, that's more talking about ETFs, but same with mutual funds, you know, they're simple diversification, they're accessible, but um, they're not only good for young investors. I mean, mutual funds can go into your IRAs or your 401ks and mm -hmm. you can have an ETF in your Roth IRA. They offer advantages like trading throughout the day that aren't typically taken advantage of in a lot of 401ks for retirement plans. You're usually thinking long-term, you know, you aren't, it's not really designed for intraday trading. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely a lot of factors to look into and to consider when choosing these funds. Um, as you touched on, like we, you know, with everything that we talk about, investing involves risk. And so you need to evaluate your risk tolerance and your goals. And, you know, you need to look into what are these funds invested in and when are you planning to use the money that you're investing? You know, it, makes for important considerations when you're thinking about sales charges and expense ratios. And mm -hmm. you also need to consider your tax implications, the style of investing and the fund type, the long-term performance, the turnover, the ratings, and the passive and active management. You just have to figure out what's right for you. And as you've said, you know, this is what your financial advisor is there to help you with. Um, and and uh, just to add on to that, you know, on top of those tax implications, on top of those uh, expense ratios, the beauty of these funds is that they offer a lot of information to us, uh, to the public. And so we can take a look and just to highlight a couple other things that we look into is one, the track record. How long has the fund been around? How long have they been performing uh, at the level that they are? There is performance metrics that they offer in terms of what's their rate been over the past you know, year, five years, 10 years since they've been, or even since their beginning. And then um, beyond that, we also like to look into the actual managers of the portfolios for a mutual fund that has active money managers. Well, how long have those managers been in the industry? How long have they been investing for? What's their track record, you know, for ETFs? Does it accomplish what we're actually looking to accomplish in terms of the sectors that we're looking to get into or areas that we care about investing? So there's a multitude of factors that we're looking into um, in the back end. And, and so when, so 
with that research, that allows us to have a conviction to be like, hey, this is this is an investment that we want to have in our portfolios and our clients' portfolios, especially. Totally. And there's also these things called leveraged ETFs. Now, leveraged ETFs amplify the returns of underlying indexes. So a two time leverage fund would try to deliver two times the return of whatever the index is tracking. There's no limit rules or regulation on the amount of leverage that could be applied to the portfolio. So you have to remember this means that volatility is also amplified. A lot of these projects are not suitable for all investors. So seriously, as we have continue to reiterate in this conversation, I think because it's really one of our first ones of really getting the weeds of investing, mm -hmm. sit down with a financial advisor and review your risk tolerance and your goals. Yeah, I mean, especially with these leveraged ETFs and ETNs, you know, these are 99.99% .99 of the time, we're gonna recommend that that isn't something you should have in your portfolio. It's a lot of risk that you're gonna be bringing on. It's for that person who has a very, who's comfortable with a lot of fluctuation, um, but it is an option, right? And something that we do wanna make aware to people who are getting invested. Um, now, the last question that a lot of people ask, especially when they're looking into mutual funds and ETFs, is the, is the fact that don't most funds underperform the market? And what this is basically asking is, you know, a lot of funds tend to underperform their benchmark. Most people benchmark, you know, when you invest, you have something that you want to compare to. And so a, lo a, a very popular comparison is, say, the S&P 500, which is the 500 biggest companies in America. When people think of uh, S&P 500, they're generally referring to the American stock market in general, right? Um, and so a lot of funds don't actually perform to the level of the S&P 500. Um, and, and yes, that's exactly right. You know, the majority of funds do not under, do underperform um, against their benchmark, whether it be the S&P 500 or something else. Um, but that's why us as a firm, being independent is so important. And, and you know, even though most funds might underperform, there are funds that do do well and have historically done well. And for us, the fact that we're independent, it means that we have the opportunity to look at thousands of funds and we are choosing what we believe are the best of the best. You know, we're looking at those metrics. We're looking at how their track record been, what's their reputation, what are the fees that are charging? Are they, are they too expensive? And do they have investment philosophies that we believe in and that align with their goals? And so it's just one of the many reasons, one of the many things us as your financial planner, investment manager, um, you know, are looking into and, 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 and why you should be reaching out to us as a, an advisor. You know, we really do want to sit down with you and, and help make sure that everything in your financial life is working towards achieving your goals as best as possible. And so um, reach out to us. You know, you can reach out to uh, our phone. It's 310-441-9393. You can find me, Ziad Hijazi, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, or email me at ziad at gerberkawasaki.com. Uh, and we're happy to help. Yes. And follow all of our social media accounts. And you can ask questions through those as well. Just shoot us a direct message. And I promise that we will respond. And we want to hear the topics that you want to hear about next. These are for you. So we want to keep creating content that's relevant to your situation. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, it looks like we're done with another how-to with Mia and Ziad, and we will see you next week. Yeah. Have a good week, everyone. See you soon.